Recently, I uploaded a video about Heedless Moths, a 1921 film that starred the world-famous artist model Audrey Munson. If you missed that video or want a refresher, here it goes. Heedless Moths was controversial because it showed nudity, though the makers of the film insisted that it was tasteful and artistic. Then, in September 1921, Fatty Arbuckle would be arrested under suspicion of murder, which culminated in a series of very public trials starting in November 1921, and led to stricter enforcement of censorship of Hollywood movies. With this stricter enforcement, there was a crusade against anything remotely inappropriate in Hollywood movies, causing added trouble for Heedless Moths, which had been making its rounds for months prior. However, the film had been panned by critics anyway, who generally thought that the storyline was terrible, and the film was simply capitalizing on the novelty of nudity. During my research of Heedless Moths, I came across a number of short articles about it from various publications from 1921, and I thought it would be interesting to share them, since it's not only a lost film, but had been a controversial one as well. So, without further ado, let's get into them. Motion Picture News, May 7th, 1921. Equity Pictures to Release Heedless Moths. Equity Pictures Corporation of New York announces this week that it will distribute Heedless Moths, featuring Audrey Munson, on the independent market. The picture had its premiere in New York recently. Heedless Moths was directed by Hobart Z. Leonard and was produced on a lavish scale, it is said. Miss Munson has had a large amount of publicity recently in Sunday papers throughout the United States which is expected to prove of inestimable value to exchanges. Elaborate advertising is now being prepared by Equity for Heedless Moths, according to an announcement of that company. According to the Equity statement, business is increasing, the independent buyer being in the market and hungry for just such productions as Equity has recently marketed. This demand for better and bigger productions has not only increased, but it constitutes a proof of the wonderful possibilities of the independent market. Heedless Moths is spectacular and was produced with lavish settings which add to the attractiveness of the theme itself. Equity obtained the rights to the production from the Perry Plays Incorporated through the arrangement of Alan Rock. The New York Times, June 4, 1921 There came into the Greenwich Village Theater last night a motion picture called Heedless Moths, featuring Audrey Munson, described as the Queen of the Artist Studios, in which, according to the advance notice, Miss Munson has surrendered to the screen the unknown history of the inspiration of many masterpieces in public and private art collections, the strange eccentricities and methods of the artists, and the distressing tragedies of the pretty models who lacked the moral balance to safeguard them from the perils of the intimate atmosphere of the studios. That sounds pretty interesting, or shocking, according to the way you look at it. But the picture itself isn't either. It's just dull. Dull and incredibly mechanical. Miss Munson may have inspired all of the artists whose names are lined up in the announcements of the film and in the story of the picture itself, but she failed to inspire those who made the picture. Apparently, they first conceived of featuring a well-known artist model, and then they were up against it. They knew what would be expected. No one goes to see an artist model in a motion picture to learn what the latest styles and gowns are. It's easy to imagine that the producers realized they would have to show their model in the studio, at work, and not too conventionally at work either. But here's censorship, and the provinces too, where, according to report, the intimate atmosphere of the studios may prove interesting if properly presented, and properly means with all due observance of the moral amenities. So Heedless Moths had to be a moral tale. Miss Munson is posed in a few brief scenes undraped, but mostly in the dim distance and the rest of it is the most solemn and completely unconvincing and therefore tedious sermonizing. The thing would have you believe that it is a genuine allegory. Besides Miss Munson, whose acting is done by Jane Thomas, the characters are the sculptor, a most noble being, his wife, a very foolish female, the dilettante, boldly called the libertine on the screen, a fully accoutred villain, black mustache, slick hair, long cigarette holder and all, the prey, his cruelly deceived victim, the sage, with a long white beard to testify to his wisdom, and the child, who personifies innocence and trustfulness. Also, there is the spirit of the arch, a monk-like figure who comes on in person to deliver a long sermon as a prologue, and now and then, as the picture progresses, reads the subtitles out loud from the wings, as if enough people in the seats didn't do that. 
and there's some trick projection from little screens at the sides of the stage to the big one in the center. And at one point, the picture scene is cut off to show the real players behind it. The most interesting thing about the performance, in fact, is watching for the next stunt of presentation. At the end, Miss Munson appears demurely to bow the spectators out. The story is about a modest little model who poses for the sculptor and inspires him, but their relations are perfectly pure. The model honors the man so much that when his wayward wife goes to the Libertine studio, she replaces her there so that the husband may never know the truth. What matters it if the man, in a rage, then shatters the beautiful work for which she has posed? She has saved a home, and her noble act of self-sacrifice overcomes the libertine. He marries the prey, and they are happy forever after. Only the poor artist model suffers, but she has made so many people virtuous and happy that her joy must transcend all things. Robert Z. Leonard directed the production, and it must be said for him that he has made a number of excellent pictures, some of them effectively lighted. Hedda Hopper as the wife does the most vivid acting, and Holmes E. Herbert as her husband is more than equal to his part too. They both deserve a better picture. The Film Daily, June 16th, 1921. Equity Lands, Heedless Moths will be released immediately to independent buyers. Equity Pictures has just closed a deal for the American and Canadian rights to Heedless Moths, featuring the famous artist model Audrey Munson. Robert Z. Leonard directed the picture for Perry Plays, and the premiere was recently given at the Greenwich Village Theatre, where it is now running. The feature of the production is the posing in the nude by the world-famous model, who has had tons of publicity recently in the various Hearst publications. This publicity can be expected to help materially on the release of the feature, which Joe Schnitzer of Equity says will be immediately. I realize, said Schnitzer yesterday, that heedless moths with the posing in the nude by Miss Munson will cause a lot of talk, but I know that there can be no objections to the production from censors because everything is so artistically handled and so beautifully done. Besides, the moral proves how fine an artist's model can be. I believe it will be one of the big successes of the year. The picture will shortly be brought uptown to a theater, for which negotiations are now underway. The Film Daily, June 19, 1921 Audrey Munson's figure featured clearly in this. Heedless Moths offers a slight and conventional plot contrived in the main to permit Audrey Munson, a really famous artist model, to display herself. The accent of the above sentence, be it said, belongs emphatically on the last syllable of the last word. The general public no longer is obliged to take the word of noted artists and sculptors that Miss Munson's is the perfect figure. Heedless Moths brings everything out very clearly. That the picture may possess commercial value and artistic merit are seemingly questions of minor importance. The big conundrum is, will the picture get by the censors? There are some beautiful shots wherein she poses in the nude, but such beauty is not appreciated by those who censor the pictures of the screen. And it is needless to add that the close shot showing the Aphrodite impressions on either side of the base on Miss Munson's spinal column may be obliterated by the well-known film eraser. As for the story, it is trite. The beautiful, sensitive model, Miss Munson. The idealistic sculptor, his butterfly wife. The sculptor does a nude group working from the life. He and his model fall in love, but it is a love not to be realized. In the meantime, the butterfly wife has become enmeshed in the nets thrown out by a dilettante artist. One night, he pulls in the nets and the wife finds herself in his exotic apartment. Climax. The model realizes that the husband is searching for his wife. She breaks into the dilettante's apartment, hides the wife, and plays the role of the reveler, thus salvaging the domestic life of the man she loves. For the model, there is left posing. The continuity is only fair but might seem better if the picture were run straight away and not broken for stage effects as it is in its New York presentation. Robert Z. Leonard's direction at times discloses an artistic touch, and the sets by A. Virag Flower are very beautiful. Leonard, however, has done better work with a well-oiled producing organization operating behind him. Miss Munson receives acceptable support from Hedda Hopper, Holmes E. Herbert, Ward Crane, Irma Harrison, and Tom Burroughs. The child actor is quite overconscious. Value depends on censor's attitude and character of audience. Box office analysis for the exhibitor. The way for heedless moths has been paved with pages of publicity in the magazine sections of the Hearst papers and their allied syndicate organs. 
there seems to be no doubt that if the exhibitor ties up his advertising of the picture with these articles, he will get the crowds coming in strong. Providing the censors let the producers get by with all the scenes at present in the continuity, it will be possible for the exhibitor to truthfully advertise this as an artistic production. There is always the danger, however, of the nude arousing the wrath of the more straight-laced audiences. It can be said, though, in defense of the producers, that there is nothing intentionally salacious or immoral about the picture. So the course of the exhibitor is easy if he thinks his public will stand for all that may or may not be in heedless moths when it comes to him. The publicity received by the star will account for an immense curiosity on the part of a large slice of the public. Motion Picture News, July 2nd, 1921. Heedless Moths moves to Broadway House. After establishing itself at the Greenwich Village Theater downtown, Heedless Moths, the new equity state right offering recently acquired from Perry Plays and starring Audrey Munson, moved to larger quarters at the Frazzy Theater on 42nd Street for an indefinite summer run. The six-reel story of life and artist studios made its debut in the moderate-sized Greenwich Village Theater for lack of a Broadway accommodation. The theater being new to motion pictures, it was the task of the Robert Leonard production to make the theater, besides establishing itself as a successful picture. Despite the fact that the public was unfamiliar with the new house, and that its location is outside the theatrical district, many traveled downtown to see the picture. Motion Picture News, July 9th, 1921 Wide publicity for Star Audrey Munson, Equity Pictures star, featured in Nation's Press. A huge amount of free publicity has been recently secured by Audrey Munson, star of Heedless Moths, the six-reel production directed by Robert Leonard and state-righted by Equity. To date, the amount of publicity, measured in its advertising equivalent, that this world-famous beauty and artist model has secured in the country's newspapers alone, is estimated by Equity at over one and a half million dollars worth. The quantity of free advertising that Audrey Munson has received is being increased weekly, and it is expected that another month will see the grand total raised to the $2 million mark, it is said. Miss Munson, as a result, has become the sensation of press, public, and picturedom. The huge publicity mentioned consists of the fascinating account of Miss Munson's life as an artist model. The entire Hearst Syndicate, embracing 42 of the nation's largest newspapers, has for the past six months been running double-page spreads on the biography of the star of Heedless Moths in every Sunday magazine issue. The number of readers of the Hearst chain of papers is approximately 10 million. For 26 weeks, the public has absorbed every word of the revelations that Audrey Munson has made concerning the secret doings in artist dens. So popular were these disclosures that the circulation of the Hearst papers was increased. The list of newspapers, each of which is the biggest in its territory, in which the life story of Miss Munson is now running in double-page splashes every Sunday, stretches from Maine to Florida and from New York to San Francisco. In every key city of the country, one or more newspapers have been publishing for the past 20 weeks the absorbing secrets of a model's life. The New York American, Chicago Herald Examiner, Boston Advertiser, Philadelphia Inquirer, Pittsburgh Press, Washington Times, Cincinnati Inquirer, Kansas City Post, Minneapolis Journal, San Francisco Examiner, Portland Journal, Denver Post, Des Moines Register, Louisville Herald, Springfield Sun, Syracuse Herald, and 33 more newspapers, in addition to a number of papers not in the Hearst Syndicate, have boosted the popularity of the star of Heedless Moths. Motion Picture News, September 24, 1921 Equity has campaign book. Rothstein prepares useful aid for exploiting heedless moths. Equity Pictures Corporation announces a new campaign book on heedless moths. The new book, designed and prepared by Nat Rothstein, originator of this effective caliber of advertising, contains punches and ideas and money-getting exploitation that is bound to pack theaters wherever this style of advertising material is used, it is claimed. The book gives the list of 42 newspapers throughout the country, and shows an actual miniature reproduction, the single and double truck Sunday newspaper feature stories that these papers carried. It also shows reproductions of many of the world-famous statues and works of art for which the famous Audrey Munson posed. Characteristic of Rothstein, who lets no opportunity escape him, he shows how exhibitors can make meat out of these same double trucks in newspapers everywhere, without cost to the papers. There is no doubt, states Equity, 
But what Audrey Munson has had more countrywide publicity through huge double trucks published as special Sunday feature stories in serial form than any artist model who ever lived. And it can safely be said that few motion picture stars ever had such a huge consecutive smash of feature stuff as this well-known artist model. Equity hasn't overlooked a single trick in the preparation of the matter, and exhibitors will find a veritable goldmine of exploitation suggestions, ideas, stunts, and showmanship of the highest caliber spread on every page of this new book. Special material for staging the picture and an unusually effective stunt at the finish of the picture give exhibitors something to use that will set the public talking. Motion Picture News, October 8th, 1921. Sale on Heedless Moths. All-Star Feature of California buys rights on Equity Feature. Lewis Hyman of the All-Star Feature Film Company, with offices in San Francisco, has purchased the rights for California, Arizona, and Nevada on Equity's picture Heedless Moths, presenting Audrey Munson, world's most famous artist model. I want an audience picture, says Hyman, that will stay put and make good for our customers, and it must possess genuine possibilities for exploitation of unusual character. Heedless Moths has actually more to talk about than many of the biggest advertised state rights pictures that I have ever seen. More than one and one quarter millions of dollars in absolutely unpurchasable newspaper space was used to tell Audrey Munson's intimate story of studio secrets to the American people. The Los Angeles Examiner carried these special Sunday feature stories and thousands more than the Examiner's regular subscribers bought the papers because of this unusual series of feature specials. I know this to be true because I was among those who watched for every Sunday's issue regularly in order to read these stories. I sent out postcard questionnaires to people all over our territory, asking in just one sentence if they had ever heard of Audrey Munson. I got 84% replies in the affirmative. That convinced me that Heedless Moths would go across with a smash backed by the tremendous personal advertising Miss Munson has had and is still getting constantly throughout the country. Robert Leonard, who directed the picture, put his usual costly touch to it, and I haven't the slightest doubt that the picture cost all and more than Equity told me. Motion Picture News, December 17th, 1921 Heedless Moths Bookings Audrey Munson picture starts run on two New York circuits. Following its premiere at the Greenwich Village Theater at $2 top and its run at the Frazzy Theater on 42nd Street at similar prices, Heedless Moths starring Audrey Munson has been booked by Fox and Lowe theaters throughout Greater New York and New Jersey. At Lowe's State Theater, Broadway at 45th Street, the picture drew thousands who have read of Audrey Munson and her reputation as America's most beautiful, most versatile artist model, who in Heedless Moths enacts by far the best picture of her career. The bookings were completed by Messrs. Mills and Berkowitz of the Elk Photo Plays, who are rapidly forging to the front as among the coming independents in the metropolitan field. Heedless Moths is winning a large number of bookings not alone in the metropolitan district but all over the state of New York, states Equity. Exhibitors who have seen Heedless Moths in private pronounce it to be one of the most lavishly staged, best directed, and best acted pictures of the present season, announces Equity. It is unquestionably one of Robert Z. Leonard's costliest photodramas, and reflects in every scene the money spent on this production. Heedless Moths will play one week in Newark, and will be exploited for showings in Paterson, New Jersey at the American Theater, also at the Fulton Theater in Union Hill, New Jersey. The Halsey Theater has also completed booking arrangements for a special showing of this picture.